Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, we continue talking about spheres in three-dimensional space. Um, certain uh, theoretical um, considerations I would like to present in the form like a problem, basically. So um, I do suggest you to go directly to unizor.com uh, to notes for this particular lecture and uh, try to solve these problems uh, yourself first. Um, doesn't really matter whether you will succeed or not, it's still useful to do it. Um, you will put your mind into this kind of problematic uh, mode. And um, another thing which is very important, um, my first uh, problem which I would like to present is, uh, well, it's again, it's more theoretical and it also involves very, very fundamental principles in geometry. And as usually, the most fundamental principles is very difficult to prove because you really have to go to all the axioms and uh, you don't have any other supporting uh, statements, uh, properties, characteristics, etc. to be based upon. So I, mm, what I'm saying in this particular case, that whatever um, I present as as a solution to problem one is not really a rigorous proof. It's more uh, explanation of certain concepts in geometry. Um, the rigorous proof is completely beyond the uh, scope of this course. So let me start. So the first. Um, problem is the following. If you have a sphere, then I'm sure you understand that it divides an entire three-dimensional space uh, into two subsets, the inside of a sphere and outside of a sphere. And um, the property of those points which are inside of the sphere is that their distance to a center is less than the radius of the sphere. Right? So let's say that radius is r. And the property of the points which are outside of the sphere is that they are uh, further from the center than the radius r. It's obvious, I mean, everybody understands it, but what if I will ask you, okay, how can you prove it? So my first um, problem is, well, not to prove it, but at least give some reasonable explanation how we can approach the proof if given really lots and lots of uh, ammunition to do it. Now, um, well, first of all, obviously, what makes sense to start with is to explain what is inside and what is outside of the sphere, right? We intuitively understand it, but what if I will ask you to define it in a more mathematical terms? Here is what I suggest, and doesn't really, uh, I'm, I'm not really stating that this is the only definition, etc., etc. But here is what I would suggest: if you take a point which is outside. How, how can we characterize that this point is actually outside? Well, let's connect it with the center. So, my characteristic which really differentiates inside from outside is that the segment which connects the center with our point, P, is supposed to intersect uh, the sphere somewhere. If, however, my point, let's say Q, is inside the sphere, then this particular segment is not um, intersecting the sphere. So, the characteristic which differentiates inside from outside is that the uh, segment which connects our point with the center either intersects in case of outside or not intersect or doesn't intersect in case the point is inside. Well, that seems to be like, you know, good definition of inside and outside. Now, as a consequence of this, we see right now that 
in this case, I have three points. on a segment. I know that this is R. This is the point where my segment intersects. So I know that this is the radius of a sphere. And since this point is in between this and this, this must be greater than R. Now, in this particular case, I know it's not intersecting, right? So let's um, uh, extend it over and beyond the point Q, where it will intersect a, a, cer a, a sphere at, at some point n. In this case, the uh, situation is the following. This is R, and this is Q. In this case, our point Q is in between O and N, and O N is equal to R, so it's supposed to be this distance supposed to be less than R. So these are considerations, and um, I would never uh, uh, call this a proof, because first of all, the definition of inside and outside is really kind of questionable. This is something which I can suggest, but maybe there are some other definitions. And based on the definition, you really have to talk about the proof. So, but anyway, I think it's a reasonable explanation of what is um, this type of inside and outside um, uh, concepts. And uh, obviously the consequence of this is that all the uh, points which are outside are further than the radius from the center and all the points which are inside are at the distance less than the radius. So that's my first problem. Now my second problem is as follows. So if you have a circle, uh, sorry, a sphere, and you have a plane which cuts this particular uh, sphere at some kind of curve. So, the plane intersects with a sphere in more than one point. That's important. Then, what's important is that if I drop a perpendicular from the center uh, onto this plane, then this perpendicular would be inside a sphere. So whatever that curve is doesn't really matter right now. I'm not really stating that this is a circle. That would be subject to the next problem. So far I'm saying the only thing is that the point where uh, my perpendicular falls onto this plane, the base of this perpendicular from the center of a sphere, onto a plane which um, intersects my sphere. This point is inside. Now, let's go back to my previous problem. Inside actually is characterized by the radius, uh, by, by this distance to be smaller than the radius, right? So that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. And here is how. Let's just pick any point at the intersection of the sphere and the plane. <coughs> and consider this triangle. Now, since point A belongs to a sphere, OA is equal to radius. Now, OP is perpendicular to the plane uh, delta, and that's why OP is perpendicular to any line on this plane, including PA. So, OPA is a right triangle. Now, OP is a catheter, OA is hypotenuse. And we know that the radio, uh, that the catheter is smaller than hypotenuse. And hypotenuse is R, right? So, the, uh, the catheter OP is supposed to be less than R. And this is exactly the characteristic property of all the inside the sphere uh, points. So the point P is supposed to be inside the sphere. 
That's my second problem. Now my third problem is that this is actually a circle. So the interception, intersection between a plane and a sphere is a circle. How can I prove that? Well, it's a flat figure since it belongs to a plane, right? The intersection. Now let's take any other point here. P, B. And that would be another triangle. <coughs> let's think about these two triangles. OPA and OPB. They're all uh, right triangles, obviously. They share the catheters OP and hypotenuses OA and OB both are radiuses of the uh, sphere. So these two triangles are congruent which means that the second pair of catheters uh, catheter, uh, they are congruent. So AP equals BP. So for any two points on this intersection I have this um, equation, which means that any other point, C, D, or whatever, is exactly on the same radius. So P is a center of all the points which are equidistant from it, which is the definition of a circle. So, whenever the plane is cutting the, the sphere, it cuts it along a sphere. That's very important. Now, this particular proof um, would not work if the plane goes through the point O, through the center of a sphere, because we cannot build triangles, the ones which I was just talking about. But this situation is actually even easier, because in this particular case, the intersection would be equator, and it's a flat, because it's uh, in, in the same plane, and all the points, since all the points belong to a sphere, all the points are equidistant from O, and the distance is R. So, they basically, that's exactly what, what, what is supposed to be proven, that all these points are in the same distance from, uh, from some point which is the center. So, this is supposed to be the intersection of the plane which goes through the point O, through the center of a sphere, is a circle and usually it's called equator but that's from Earth's geometry okay that's it for this problem and this, the, the fourth problem is now I was talking about this particular plane delta intersecting along some curve basically my point was that there are more than two points in an intersection a and B are two different points. That, that's my proof was built upon. What if there is only one common point between a plane and a sphere? So it doesn't really cut it, it touches it. It's a tangential plane. So when the plane and the sphere have only one point um, uh, of intersection, we are talking about tangential uh, plane. So. Right now, I would like to prove that in this particular case, when the plane is tangential, then a radius so this is the, the, the point where, uh, the, point where uh, the plane touches the, the sphere. So this particular radius into the point of uh, touching is perpendicular to the plane, which is absolutely equivalent to a plane, uh, a plane geometry. So whenever you have a line which is tangential line to a circle, the radius is perpendicular to the line, right? So this is a three-dimensional equivalent. Now, how can I prove it? Actually, it's very, very easy to do. Because think about this. Um, if my plane touches only in one point P, everything else is supposed to be outside of the sphere. 
And we know that whatever is outside of the sphere has a distance greater than from the center, greater than the radius. So this OP is equal to the radius, and OA is greater than the radius, wherever this other point A is, doesn't really matter. Which means that OP is a shortest distance from the point O to the plane. So among all the points, OP is shorter than anything else. And that's basically sufficient uh, condition for perpendicularity. Because if we, if we, for instance, if we will consider that there is another point, let's say somewhere here, Q, and this is a perpendicular, so what happens? If this is a perpendicular, then this is supposed to be shorter than this one, right? Because this is the catechus, and this would be hypotenuse in this case. So OP would be shorter. But that's not the case. OQ is greater than R, and OP is equal to R. So Q cannot be any other point but point P. So that's basically the end of my uh, small group of, I would say, very theoretical uh, problems. I mean, something like the theorem about perpendicularity is, is really a, a theory, it's not really a problem which can be solved after all the theory has been um, learned. So I just presented all these uh, little statements of uh, theory of the spheres in the form of uh, uh, the problems. So I suggest you to go back to the unisor.com and review the notes for this lecture and again try to resurrect your own logic, your own proofs maybe, or these ones, whatever you have uh, heard from, 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 uh, from this lecture. And uh, these are always very nice exercises in, in just logical, strategical thinking about this. Well, basically let me just repeat something which I re have repeated many times before. Mathematics is very rarely uh, gives you some real knowledge which you can use in your practical life. What it gives you, it gives you the exercise for your, for your mind, for your brain to be able to solve the real life problems. This is just tunes up your, your thinking machine. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>